I truly hope that this expansion is going to change both the way people see the museum and the way they experience glass. I think this expansion is really enabling us to do what we do best, to tell the world about glass and to do so in the most compelling manner possible. We're driven by a need to better accommodate our visitors. The museum's visitation has fundamentally doubled uh, over the last decade, and the length of stay uh, in the museum for our visitors has, has more than tripled. So we fundamentally had run out of room, but we also knew that we had a fantastic opportunity to showcase glass in ways we'd never been able to show it before. As artists have begun to work the material more effectively, develop their concepts, and really try to push the boundaries of what they are doing, the scale of objects has increased. Artists are working incredibly large these days, and we really, really needed a space in which these pieces could be accommodated beautifully. When we had our conversation for the first time with Tom, Thomas Pfeiffer, it became immediately clear that he would want to begin with the glass, with the experience of seeing the glass. Every gesture that you make here it needs to not be about the architect or about the architecture. It needs to be about the work. Tom Pfeiffer and partners have designed this beautiful, beautiful, minimalist white box in which to showcase our contemporary collection. Tom Pfeiffer chose not to make a huge statement about glass, but rather, as he says, to provide this wonderful, ephemeral space in which the objects can live. It was a very interesting experience working with an architect who spent so little time in the beginning of the project talking about architecture. He was focusing on the glass that would be on display and how, how best to see that glass. First thing we did was take a glass object out into the sunshine and we looked at it and it just exploded with light. That was a kind of wonderful moment for us because we discovered that glass loves light. So we knew we wanted to start with daylight. We knew we wanted the Contemporary Gallery to utilize daylight. And because glass isn't light sensitive, we have a wonderful opportunity here to create a Contemporary Gallery that is entirely top lit. The entire roof of the Contemporary Gallery is a skylight. You know, when you're working on most museums, we have to keep the light levels down so we protect the works. Here at Corning, we were able to push an enormous amount of daylight from the ceiling, and so we developed a special skylight and a special ceiling here that will push the light directly down at the works. It's, it's an engineered experience that's allowed to change over the course of the day. I love the idea of looking at sculpture and having a cloud pass over the sun and to see that difference uh, as that shadow passes by. It's so dynamic. The character of that room and the character of these works will constantly change and it will bring nature into the experience. Glass has never been displayed this way before and we are really looking forward to pushing the boundaries of contemporary art and glass. A museum Typically, you're worried about controlling light, but and you also need flat surfaces because you want to have paintings on flat surfaces. Here, the vast majority of the things we were going to be showing were sculptural. They were standing on the floor. They don't need flat walls. And one day, we came into Tom's office and he had a, an Alvar Alto vase. He had it upside down on his conference table. And he began talking about the liberation from the corners and the edges that you normally see. We wanted to have these soft walls so that they're almost cloud-like, so that when you walk in, you don't really read corners so much. There are no columns. We don't have a room full of a forest or even a few supporting columns. This gives us a completely open space. Everything that the ceiling and the roof need in terms of uh, supporting structure is in the walls. So they're, they're doing a lot of work uh, structurally, but if we succeed, they'll, they'll work very hard at trying to disappear to let the artwork come forward as much as possible. Because you know, when you stand in front of a work and you make that connection without distractions, 
that is a poetic and memorable moment. I think what's the most exciting is the sense of space that we'll have. It will be a space unlike any other in the museum. And I also love this area that we call the porch. The, the serpentine wall galleries are surrounded by a perimeter space that provide peaks out into the landscape, very carefully selected views out into the landscape. Kind of a porch, I'm from the south, and know the southern porch, the kind of gathering place there, a kind of threshold to the landscape. So our contemporary galleries are these beautiful, modernist, minimalist galleries. So simple, so exquisitely detailed. And you step from there into fundamentally an industrial building with uh, industrial processes taking place. We have long needed a larger theater for our hot glass demonstrations. And by creating the expansion space, we have developed a footprint for a very large hot glass theater where we can demonstrate glass making techniques to up to 500 people. The architect asked Eric Meek, who leads our glass blowing team, what is it that you want to achieve? And Eric put it very simply, he said, we want to make the best glass ch hot shop in the world. And uh, that's what we set out to do. We have an expansive space, a huge footprint, in which artists can try and manipulate this material to the greatest extent that they can. And for me, it's incredibly important that that glass blowing theater is the old Stuban glass blowing room. I love that continuity and that history and that sense of place. I think of it as a cathedral for hot glass with the molten glass sort of on center. So spiritually, the idea that that is the, the point that you're being directed to as you arrive at this museum and come to this, this, this material, I would argue this magic material, that is the source of so much creative and artistic and technical creativity, um, is just such a compelling idea. So I think it's gonna be tremendously exciting. And I think we're gonna set a standard that's gonna be hard to beat at any other museum around the world.